Hey, I'm Scott Hanselman and it's Azure Friday. We're digging into Azure Web Jobs with Pranav. Um, so we saw that we can upload scripts, batch files, dot commands, soon PowerShell, any executable. Right. Put them in a folder and they run. Yes. But a while back there was a code name simple batch uh, concept that lets you uh, kind of do model binding in the cloud. It was a little bit interesting. And that's become Web Jobs SDK. That's correct. <clears throat> So what Scott's talking about is like, you know, I can write simple hello world kind of jobs and sort of push it, but a lot of times I want to do something more meaningful, like I'm going to read from blobs, I'm going to read from uh, write to queues, or like write to storage as well. Mm -hmm. And we have a lot of ceremony that we try to do around like, how do I read and write from blobs and stuff. So this SDK is all about making it easier to talk to storage. Right, like you could go and write a, an executable and use the Azure SDK and write to storage and read from storage, the, the kind of the regular right. way. In the regular way. Yeah. But what the jobs SDK brings is you it adds triggers to it. So, hey, like I wrote a new blob, so this function gets triggered and I can do something meaningful, like process an image or something like that. So that's where the SDK comes in. Mm -hmm. uh, so what I have in this uh, application is, uh, <coughs> uh, this is using the jobs SDK. And uh, I've installed the jobs SDK by a NuGet package. So mm -hmm. we have a NuGet package called Microsoft.WindowsAzure.Jobs. And uh, <coughs> you know, I bring in this NuGet package. It brings in the dependent libraries, and it gets added as a reference. And to get started with the jobs SDK, I basically new up a host in my main uh, function of my console exe. Mm -hmm. And I call run and block. So this is an example of, I would put like a while true loop, and this is job which is going to run always. Uh, and so as soon as a new message comes in, this function is going to get triggered. And this job has just one function, hello world. It's kind of introducing you what this SDK is about. Mm -hmm. And you would notice that it has two uh, parameters, is a blob input and a blob output. So what this function will do is, it'll read from a blob called Azure Friday input, and write to a blob container called Azure Friday Output. Mm -hmm. And it's going to bind the contents of this blob to a text reader so you can read the contents of the blob itself. Okay. And this is using a, 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 a kind of an interesting syntax that not everyone's familiar with. If you're not familiar with MVC, right. you don't see a lot of attributes being applied to parameters within functions. So there's a lot going on there, I think, for some C-sharp people. Yes. But you're basically saying that the contents of this text reader are fed by this, this, par this attribute that you uh -huh. annotate your parameter with. So when something gets dropped into this folder, it's, you know, it has a name. Right. Any blob is going to just show up here. Exactly. <clears throat> so if I have 100 things, it's going to get called 100 times. Yes for each uh, entry in that blob container. Mm -hmm. And I have my connection string set up in app config, which point to my storage account. So I'm going to try to simulate something uh, to execute this function. I'm going to go to my blob, and I have my blob container called Azure Friday Input. I'm using this tool called Azure Storage Explorer so I can upload uh, files to a blob itself, and I can send message on the queue. So this file has a hello world.txt uh, input. And so as soon as I run this job, it's going to, the SDK is going to figure out that, okay, this is the hello world function. It's listening on a blob container called Azure Friday input, and it's going to scan all the blobs that are there. And for each blob, this function is going to get executed. I see. And because you used that, that host, Yes. Part of the jobs SDK, that's where that output's happening. I don't yes. have to write console.write line exactly. or any test code or anything. Nothing like that. to do, nothing around that. And so I can quickly go back to my storage explorer, check my output container. Oh, and there it is. And there is the hello world.txt file, which we just read from the input container. Ah, okay. And this has been great uh, for me as I've been exploring the web jobs SDK, because if I have an image, for example, on my blog, uh, like a PNG or a JPEG, I'm going to want to make sure I extra squish it. Yes. So I'll upload it, it gets recognized, then I squish it, and right. then put the output yes. in a squished location, yeah. and then maybe feed that into the CDN or whatever. Exactly. And the best part about it is like, you know, going back to the whole idea that we've always been good at writing sort of console applications and do this squish it kind of scenarios, but mm -hmm. we've always struggled on how do we talk to storage and how do I persist it. 
So I think this SDK helps that set of developers who want to move the code to Azure, but are kind of stuck because they only know how to do the squishing part of the application and not the Azure storage specifics. Right, right. You you know how to write console apps. You know how to test console apps. You see them working well. Yes. Whether they do resizing or squishing or OCR or converting things to PDFs or whatever kind of batch work you do. Exactly. But it's the then do it n times. Yes. In the cloud in the that cloud. gets interesting. That's where, that's where it gets interesting. Right. So I'm gonna sort of go back, uh, <clears throat> and I have the same code running in uh, Azure websites itself. Mm -hmm. So this is a site which is gonna listen for <clears throat> any new blobs that come uh, inside the <clears throat> container. So I'm going to start this uh, job itself. So this is the first time when the job gets started. I think that the site is sort of warming up. It's going to start the job. And eventually, I'm going to refresh the portal. And I'll see that the job is still running. Mm -hmm. Now, for job management that is at the process level, we saw that we had, in previous videos, uh, each job kind of showed up. Each job has a folder. Yes. And the processes live in those folders. And those show up here, and you can start them and stop them. Exactly. But then there's this logs thing over here that is a kind of a fancy URL. Yes. And so since you're using the SDK, the URL of this log is uh, slightly different from what you were seeing earlier. Uh, it sort of points you to this link called Azure Jobs which is sort of the dashboard that we see for all these jobs that are running. Mm -hmm. And there, this gives you a sort of final level granularity on what functions are executing or what is the state of the function, what are the parameters of the function, or if a function failed, like why did the function fail, how long is it running for. So it gets very interesting if you have scenarios like CSV readers where you're reading like you know, 10,000 lines of uh, rows and you it's probably going to take like five hours for you to finish that job. So that's where the dashboard sort of becomes very interesting. Right, and you'll look at the, the URL there, and if you're familiar or you watched maybe the Azure Friday with David Ebo where we showed the debug console, that lived at the end. So you visited your website. Right. And rather than your website dot Azure websites, it's your website dot SCM, and you'll find there's Azure Jobs, there's debug uh, console, so, there's the Visual Studio Online, online stuff. Which is Monaco. It's these, it's these parallel websites right. that are helper websites for your website. Exactly. And Azure Jobs is one of those. Exactly. So there's Hello World right there. So there's Hello World. Like if I drill into it, you can basically see <coughs> what the function sign signature looks like, when was the last execution time. And I can even click this uh, Hello World input, and I'll see the contents of the blob itself. Uh, go back there and hit Toggle Output. So that's your console.write line. That's your console.write console line. So any sort of logging which I had to do in my application, if I were to do any sort of console.write lines, we would pump the output and show you the uh, output of your console write lines over here. And you know, like uh, it shows you how many bytes have you read, what's the total time that you spent in running this job. So, so some final level details which are interesting. Yeah, the bytes being read and written were really cool because when I was writing a, the compressor to show the image, I see that the 100K <laughs> image went in, and then I didn't even have to look at the log output because then it wrote out you know, 75K, and I was like, oh, good. Yes. <laughs> it worked because the number is smaller. Exactly. <laughs> Very cool. Well, we're learning all sorts of great stuff here about Azure Web Jobs on Azure Friday.